Hello and welcome to another episode of Mr. Nap Podcast. I'm your host, Ethi Shah, and today we're diving into critical conversation which resonates across the globe, which is addressing health inequities, which from policies and strategies for reducing disparities. Joining me is an extraordinary guest, Dr. Maria Cresel, that Dell Law Wales. Dr. Maria is a medical officer, a dedicated general physician, and a public health physician with a wealth of experience. Her expertise and commitment to advancing equitable health care makes her the perfect guest for the discussion today. So, Dr. Maria, it's an honor to have you here and thank you for joining me. Uh, thank you so much. I am more than welcome and more than grateful in joining this um, interview and podcast. Thank you, doctor, and welcome to the podcast. Now, to start with doctor, you know, with a, let's start with a broad perspective. So, from a global standpoint, uh, what are the most pressing health inequities you observe today, particularly in low and middle income countries? Okay, so to start with that question, um, I would like to first define um, health inequity. So, health inequity basically is the unfair and avoidable differences in health outcomes between groups of people. Uh, it's caused by both structural and procedural dimensions that benefit some groups while marginalizing others. So inequalities in health occurs in um, different population. Uh, it exists in all countries, whether high income or low income. But these differences occur along several axes of social stratification, including socioeconomic, political, ethnic, cultural, and it's not a great deal of a mystery as to why poor people in low-income countries suffer from high rates of illness, particularly infectious diseases and malnutrition because of, you know, little food, um, unclean water, basically um, low resources, low level of sanitation and health, um, failure to deal with these environments lead to high exposure to these agents. Similarly, uh, there is a great deal of knowledge of the causes of non-communicable diseases that represent the major burden of disease for people at the lower end of the social gradient in the middle and low income countries. So there is ample evidence that social factors, including uh, education, employment status, income level, gender and ethnicity have a marked influence of how healthy a person is. So in all countries, whether it's low, middle, or high income, there are wide disparities in the health status of different social groups. Basically, the lower an individual's socioeconomic position, the higher the risk of poor health. That is so incredibly insightful. And also, I agree with you that when you say that you know addressing these inequities actually requires a collective effort also, I think. So now building on that only, what do you think that what role do healthcare professionals play in advocating for and shaping policies to reduce health disparities and how can they collaborate effectively with policy makers? Um, actually, uh, population health or health in general, it's uh, influenced by a broad range of factors, uh, including uh, structural, uh, social and economic conditions, such as uh, public policies and education, social security, uh, healthcare and other areas, living and working conditions, and many more. So, healthcare workers they play crucial roles in the interventions and policies that promote health equity by providing one culturally sensitive services. Next, they partner with communities to promote population health and they address unconscious racial and ethnic biases in healthcare delivery. So, healthcare workers. Um, whether they are doctors or nurses or other professions, they engage in a range of health equity interventions, including but not limited to improving the health education for patients and providers about risk factors, healthy practices, training focus, and providing culturally informed care to a variety of population, like health equity interventions focus on uh, health promotion by developing uh, screening programs, for example, or increasing access to preventive care. So they, they develop health policies that increase the awareness and target the racial discrimination in healthcare and other social realms. So health equity interventions are aimed at improving a provider-client interactions in clinical care. So basically, healthcare workers play a role in policy by representing the patient's interest 
advocating for patients' rights and contributing to the decision making processes. Thank you. Actually, that is so rightly mentioned. And I think collaboration between these two is such a crucial step as well, right? Yes, yes, definitely. Now, also, you mentioned how uh, social factors also influence health, right? So, yes. uh, how does social determinants uh, of health framework help public health professionals address inequities more effectively? And what gaps do you see in its application? So, just a brief uh, background on what is the social determinants of health. So, basically, um, WHO um, devised a conceptual SDOH framework, which demonstrates how social, economic, and political factors such as, of course, income, education, occupation, gender, race, and ethnicity influence a person's socioeconomic position, which in turn plays a role in determining the health outcomes. So, social determinants of health or SDH framework help public health professionals address health equities more effectively by, first, they provide a comprehensive understanding since social determinants of health are non-medical factors that influence health outcomes. They can explain um, why some communities experience high rates of diseases, health utilization, and even mortalities. Also, the framework helps us identify entry points for intervention. So, the conceptual framework helps us identify where to intervene to reduce the health disparities or health inequities. Also, um, in this type of framework, it requires rigid uh, coordination and cooperation since SDH is a complex and multifactorial, so addressing them requires coordination across sectors, like whether it's public, whether it's private, whether it's voluntary sector. So people of lower socioeconomic status, rural populations, and communities of color experience high burden of poor health relative to those people with higher socioeconomic status or um, the health inequity gap has been increasing over time. So since um, inequities are unnecessary and just, they are still avoidable. So the roots of these inequities are shaped by structural determinants. And understanding and acting on these determinants will help healthcare workers, nurses, doctors play a role in improving the health inequity. So changes upstream through changes in national policy and midstream at the individual level through integrated social care are needed to connect the individuals to social services to include healthy food, affordable housing, and transportation and improving the health of the population as a whole. Yeah. Uh, that is actually uh, very clear and thank you for breaking that down and also I think it is so fascinating how addressing social determinants actually create a uh, such a ripple effect in improving the outcomes. But over that one, I also had one more question regarding that is what are the main challenges do you think are very important to address in such levels? So um, although uh, um, inequities in health result from social conditions that led to illness, uh, the high burden of illness, particularly among socially disadvantaged populations, it creates pressing need to make health systems responsive to population needs. So, this disadvantages actually pushes, no, it pushes um, the healthcare workers to act and to help policymakers. It pushes policymakers to make or draft policies to implement at the ground level. It also pushes the community to be members of the societal changes. That is uh, rightly mentioned. Now, you know, Dr. Aspi looks to the future. What emerging trends or strategies do you see as uh, game changers in the fight against health inequities? So, to, um, what are the usually emerging trends and strategies to fight this health inequity? We can actually intervene to reduce the health inequities in a number of ways. However, to have a real impact, interventions need to be at scale. It needs to cover all the population, not just um, the healthcare workers, to reach large groups of population. So, one, an engaged leadership that considers reducing the health inequalities. Um, the leadership uh, needs to see that a key to delivery of the first level priorities is critical because it needs to be built into local vision and strategy and integrated to the key policy areas. Next, uh, place-based systems 
are well positioned to achieve the population level change required to reduce inequalities. So this includes strong partnerships involving public and private and voluntary sectors. So it's an inter-collaboration in the uh, multi-level collaboration. So it needs to have plans, the programs, and even services that are co-produced by these sectors, setting goals that are realistic, of course, and establishing means and time skills for when to expect these changes. So these are the emerging strategies that are essential to provide um answer to health inequities. Yeah, I think I think it's so inspiring to hear about these emerging trends and also it might take us take some time also to actually implement these. So yes, yes it's really exciting to know as well. Now one last question, Doctor, would be how does community engagement play uh, an important passage in the public health development. So, actually, when you read um, papers about community engagement, they will say that the most successful public health initiative have three things in common. They were initiated by a serious public health risk or issue that affected everyone. For example, the COVID-19. Regardless of the background, everyone was affected by it. So they were solved by uh, innovative solutions, the development of vaccines and other um, clinical practical guidelines. And they were implemented through community involvement because it needs community to be engaged in the public health um, narrative. So community engagement is technically an approach to address health related issues, to take actions and the social determinants of health. So it involves building relationships based on trust and working together to develop a more effective health interventions and programs uh, to empower the communities as key actors for health. So true community engagement, the individuals, the communities, they take active role of their own health and they participate in the decisions and structures that impact their health and well-being. So in this way, uh, intentional engagement efforts, they help address local issues and opportunities because they know it better than the uh, policymakers. They know their localities better. So they identify and implement more effective ground solutions and they leverage their local resources to sustain health interventions because that's one of the um, key um, key factors in the de um, developing policies. It needs to be uh, sustainable. So the process is also essential in strengthening the trust and respect between stakeholders because we should use or we should identify communities as one of the stakeholders in public health and identify and see them as keys to achieving a positive and sustainable health outcomes. Actually, that is so right you mentioned and it is so important to actually uh, be in such a role as well. So thank you for sharing such a forward thinking outlook as well. So, yes. Yeah. So now, as we wrap up today's session, Doctor, this has been such an enlightening conversation. Your insights on addressing health inequities and the strategies for reducing the disparities are truly invaluable. So thank you for sharing those. Thank you so much for hearing um, the public health side of of healthcare. No? Um, it's very seldom that it's discussed, but it's a great platform to identify Thank you so much for joining and I let me tell you that your tireless dedication is to public health is something that, which is very commendable. Yes. So yeah. And to, to our listeners, thank you for tuning into this episode of Mix and Maps Podcasts. And remember, if you're a healthcare professional who's eager to delve deeper into medical topics or have questions, do not hesitate to join us on the Mix and Maps platform. Medicine Apps platform is not just a resource, it's a dynamic space where you can connect with the medical peers, participate in meaningful discussions, and contribute to the ongoing evolution of healthcare. So until next time, stay informed and stay inspired.